Okay, so uh, let's maybe get started. And uh, at first, let me, as usual, say thank you. Thank you for being here at the conference and, of course, at my presentation, especially that now it's lunchtime. So the beautiful and uh, really tasteful sandwiches are served. But we here uh, are to talk about something really interesting. Well, maybe not that interesting. We will be talking about pack shots. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I am not going to tell you how to create a unique, uh, fantastic alien creature or how to destroy a city, but just something like this that you can see. This is the pack shot. And uh, I would like to ask you a question. Is there anyone here in this room who doesn't know what the pack shot is? Thank you. At least one person. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, and uh, of course there are some people who are uh, watching it uh, streaming, so I will answer this question. What is the pack shot? It's just a shot, it's just a picture, it's just an image of the product. So here we have some pack shot. We are simply presenting the pack. What I am going to talk about is about creating pack shots for TV commercials. And uh, I will uh, do it not the standard way, like, uh, okay, uh, what to do to create a fantastic uh, shader, uh, how to light it, and so on. I will be more talking about the clients who we deal with, and so on, and what uh, tricks I use to force them to eventually <laughs> buy the thing that I am providing. So, okay, and uh, why did I choose? Uh, why did I choose to uh, talk about uh, uh, pack shots? Uh, so, just a few words about myself. Uh, I chose to talk about pack shots because that's what I do for a living. And my name is Bartek Skorupa. I'm a Blender Foundation certified trainer, and uh, I publish video tutorials on my uh, website as well as on the CG Cookie. Uh, this is uh, my profile at uh, Blender Network. So, and those are the examples of the tutorials that I published uh, on uh, CG Cookie. Thank you. Okay, so back to the topic, pack shots. Those are our heroes. So here we have example of some pack shots. Yeah, this is the pack shot, okay? Uh, it's not a standard pack shot, but it's a pack shot. This is the pack shot. Something less uh, beautiful, but still. And this will eventually become a pack shot. Yeah, this is a pack shot. Another pack shot. And yet another one. Bam. <laughs> pack shot. Yeah, another pack shot. Wow. Something. Mm hmm. Oh, this is not a pack shot, but I included this. Oh, this is the pack shot. Another one. Fantastic. Wow. All those supers and so on, this is the Polish language. Some of you understand this, some don't, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So, now, when we are working with, uh, with uh, the clients and when, when, when I'm creating pack shots for uh, TV commercials, uh, there are several things that I have to consider and uh, the workflow. This is this is the very important thing. And understanding the time. You know, it's like everybody thinks that uh, one minute is simply one minute. It's a universal unit. One minute, one, sec one second, one hour, one month, one week, one day. But the time costs money. And uh, some periods are more valuable than the other periods in time. So, for example, the more time you spend on preparation, the less time you have to spend afterwards. And this is pretty important because when you are working with a client, 
all of the changes that they will want you to introduce will come afterwards. They, they will come at the end of the process. So for example, you have modeled something. You have modeled something, you prepared the shaders, the uh, lighting and so on, and you gave uh, your client uh, the animatic that will simply show the simple animation that you, that's, that you're creating. So you think that it's over. Okay, I am done with the animation. So right now I can hit the magic button render and render all of this animation. And I think, okay, they will never go back to the animation itself because they approved it. Well, they approved it, but someday they will simply come to you and say, hey, everything is fantastic. It's really fantastic, but please change it just a little bit. I don't want to change much. I want to change the position of this puck just a little bit. So, well, and uh, this just a little bit, what does it mean? It means that you should do it immediately, right now. A S A P. Like in an hour. And okay, and they will say, Oh, I know that it needs to render for two weeks, but I just want to see it in motion in a few minutes. This is what they do. Now, let's uh okay, let's talk about pack shots and the kinds of the pack shots. There are like uh, several uh, two kinds of the pack shots that we are working, uh, uh, that we are creating for, 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 for TV commercials. One kind is the pack shot that is created 100% in 3D. So you're the master of your shot. The structure of the commercial usually is like we have like 27 or 28 seconds of the story. We are uh, we have the actors, we have the sets, and so on, and then the, the, those, those two or three seconds of the pack shot. And we can be the masters of our pack shot, we can create everything in 3D, but sometimes the pack shot is also shot on set. So let's maybe once again take a look at some, uh, at those examples of the pack shots. This one, for example, this is 3D, 100%. This is 3D, 100%. Here we have the combination. So some of uh, the things here are uh, created in 3D, some are shot. And this is shot. This is this is all uh, shot on set. So those elements, this this one here, and so on. Even though it doesn't look this way, those are the set elements. Okay, this is shot, obviously. This is the combination. So we have something uh, in the back. We have the pack shot that is, it. <coughs> It was created in 3D, but then some elements were replaced and so on, so some, some work has been uh, done here. This is shot and combined with some, some uh, visual effects. Oh, this is 3D. 3D, of course. Shot. Shot and modified quite a bit, I will show you later. Shot and modified quite a bit. So, when we are the masters of our shot, when we are creating everything in 3D, uh, we can change everything. And this is what we, under we understand that we can do it. We can, okay, we can change the position of the object, we can change the animation, this is this is not the problem. Of course, the problem is that we have to re-render, but we are still the masters of our shot. Sometimes, however, you have, you have the shot that is given to you. So, like in this case, everything here has been shot, and the client doesn't understand that there is a difference. They 
can ask me to change the position of the object, to change the position of the package, uh, and uh, they understand that it's not a problem for me when I am creating it in 3D, but they don't see any difference between 3D generated packshot and shot packshot. This is the packshot that has been shot, but they can ask me just to, to move the element around. But it's, you know, it's moving. The camera is moving. So, well, we have the problem, and we understand this problem. They don't. So let me show you the process of creating the pack shot that you saw. This one, OK. This is the, this is what came from the set. This is uh, one of uh, the versions that were shot. Now, this is another version. And let's take a look at uh, this one once again. And what the client asked me to do, it, it was, OK, the shooting is over. We are in the post-production. And now they realized that uh, one of the products of all of this, uh, those uh, things here is not available yet. We have to remove one of them from the shot, this one. Just, and and, and they, they simply say, just remove it. Ah, as simple, remove it. OK, so, well, so this is one of the versions. And then, uh, OK, I removed it. This is, the, this is the same shot with one of the packets removed. And then they realized, well, those ones are also not. Uh, so we came up some, with something like this. And it's, it, 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 looks, it looks awful. Because you know all the composition is ruined. Somebody spent some time on set to, to composite all of this, to, to, to place it. And, and, and this is how it looks like. It, it's crazy. So then what they said, uh, they said, um, OK, uh, so maybe um, it would be better if uh, those packages are lying, not standing. Could you simply lie them down? And I, this was the this this was the moment where when I simply say said no. Finally, okay, no, I won't do it. Fortunately, we had the other version of this pack shot, uh, this one, where those products are lying. So I simply said, okay, can we simply use this one? And maybe I knew that it's uh, it's easier for me to remove this pack from this shot than to lie those objects from the other shot. So I did it, and uh, this is the final version. <laughs> so, well, so uh, those are the crazy things that uh, we have to uh, cope with. Now, in uh, many situations when we are working with uh, those pack shots, I, I don't want to talk about the uh, standard uh, 3D generated pack shots because this is this is obvious, this is easy. Everybody here knows how to uh, create them. The only thing about those pack shots that I wanted to uh, share with you uh, is that it's good when you're doing uh, repetitive uh, stuff, it's good to have uh, like uh, pre-made uh, things, like uh, pre-made uh, uh, studio setups, uh, lighting setups, uh, materials, and so on. So, but this is uh, pretty easy. Uh, let's go back to those uh, more, in my opinion, more interesting uh, uh, pack shots that are shot on set. Well, in many cases, we have to track something. And my workflow is that um, the center of the universe for me is After Effects. This is the program that I am using too. Uh, do visual effects to um, uh, to correct some things uh, in the live uh, footage and so on. And uh, of course, when I am uh, generating something in 3D, I bring it all to After Effects, and this is the center of my universe. Why am I uh, saying this? Because, uh, for example, let me. Let's imagine. 
Okay, this is After Effects and uh, its uh, interface, and here I have uh, the shot that I am working on. And let's imagine that uh, the task that I'm having is to add some super, something like, I, I can write something down. Okay, so uh, I, choose the, I choose the font, I choose the color of the font, uh, and then, okay, I typed something and moved it, placed it correctly, sized it down, and it's fantastic. And now, okay, I'm playing it back, and you see that it looks a little bit weird because you know it's not attached to uh, anything. It's like uh, floating. You you see that it, it doesn't belong to to the shot. So we need to track this footage. In this case, this tracking is pretty simple. The only thing that we have to track is a single point, and I have three tools for tracking to my disposal. The first one, the worst one, is the built-in tracking in After Effects, something that is built in After Effects. It works horrible. This is the worst tool. The second tool that I am using is something that is called Mocha for After Effects. This is a separate application. It works fantastic. And the third tool that I am sometimes using uh, is Blender tracking system. Uh, and I wouldn't I don't want to uh, tell which, uh, which one of them, uh, the Mocha or uh, Blender's uh, tracker, which one is better. For some purposes, Mocha is better. For some purposes, Blender tracking is better. In this case, for example, in case uh, I want just to track one single point, I don't want to use any of them. I don't want to use those good tools, Mocha or uh, Blender, but I want to stay inside After Effects because when I'm tracking just a single point, it's better for me, it's faster just to track it here even though it takes uh, more time and it's not that robust, but I don't have to export the shot, I don't have to go to other application and then import the result back. So in this case, I simply use this built-in uh, uh, tracking device and I track a point like this point. Bam. It goes slowly, this is real time. You see how slowly it goes, but you know, it takes less time then exporting it and importing the result back. So that, that's why I simply stay in After Effects. And then uh, I simply added the, the, the object. I added the null object. Null is the equivalent of empty in Blender. So I added the null object and I applied those data to this object. So now when I apply it, this object just follows this tracked point and I can simply parent my super to this null object and I am done. This is, this is how it's done. And it works. So it's no use to exit After Effects. But sometimes you have some uh, more, complicated, uh, more complicated task. For example, you need to I don't know, replace, uh, place the artwork of, of this uh, thing uh, here. So you would need something some like uh, four uh, corners and uh, you know, corner pin, something like that. But you still don't need 3D tracking. You don't need to track the camera. You, you, you simply need to 2D track. And then you can, in some situations, use the built-in After Effects tracking, but this is not the uh, best solution. And in such case, I would use the Mocha tracking. So this is separate application. And what I do here, I simply import my sh uh, shot. I choose the frame rate, and this is what I do. This is, th this is fantastic because, okay, uh, I need to place something here onto, 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 onto this object. So what I do, I draw the shape, but really rough. See, like bam, bam, one point, second point, bam, bam, that's it, nothing more, nothing more. And I don't care 
if those points are in the corners or if they are not. Uh, now I am adjusting this just a little bit, maybe even something like this, something like this. Here in this corner, I would maybe choose this point, this point, bam, and let's track it. Let's track it, bam. And this is how it tracks. And then what I do, I don't care about the shape. I don't care about uh, where the image will be placed. Something gets tracked. And now what I do, this is, this is like another layer that is attached to those, uh, to, to, to these tracks. And, and, and here I have the corners. So after the tracking, I place the corners of the image where I want them, like this, bam, and bam. Just take a look. I play it back. I will play it back in a moment. Maybe. I hope. OK, I play it back. And now it goes to the end. And I realize that you know it doesn't match perfectly at the end frame. So what I do, I adjust it the end frame. I don't care about what happens in between. I simply adjust those points a little bit and they will get interpolated in between those two keyframes. I have just two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end. And you see, and those points can be used as the corners of the image that I will place here. And of course, in some, some, some more uh, complicated scenarios, I will need to use the camera tracking, 3D tracking. So in, 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 in such case, I would, uh, of course, use the uh, blender, uh, blender camera tracking. So this is the case where I used camera tracking. Because uh, here, in the original shot, we have the change in perspective and so on. So none of the tools uh, would be, none of the tools but Blender's uh, camera tracking would be good enough uh, to, to compensate for, for the perspective shift. So uh, this was the way uh, that I used to remove this object from here. In fact, in this case, I used, uh, I used uh, all three systems. Some of the points uh, I tracked using just a built-in After Effects uh, tracker. Uh, some of the things I tracked using Mocha. So for example, to have this shape, this one, I knew that I, will want to, I would want to put this one in front of everything. So for this, I used Mocha, and I simply draw uh, the shape and uh, tracked it and exported it and imported it back into After Effects. But to recreate the this area, the the okay floor, let's call it floor, to recreate the floor, I used uh, uh, Blender's uh, Blender's uh, camera tracking. So in fact, this is. Uh, like uh, that would be all, in fact. Um, and uh, just to just to sum up, uh, it's like uh, uh, we uh, are talking about uh, pack shots. We are uh, talking about creating pack shots for uh, TV commercials. Uh, and well, it is important to spend to so sometimes to spend more time at the beginning of the process to. Um, to spend less time at the end of the process, because at the end of the process, when you are really good prepared, uh, you will not be surprised and, uh, by the client who is uh, simply telling you, okay, please change this, please change that. You are prepared for all of this. And you have to anticipate the client's uh, uh, needs in the future. And it's good to know what the client would need um, in advance. So, well, 
that's all. Thank you. And I'm open to questions. Thanks. I was just curious about the, the mask you used for the background. Was that just a, a Photoshop image or, or something when you had no, to? No, uh, it was, um, uh, what I did, I did it uh, inside After Effects also, but using the techniques, exactly the same technique you would use in Photoshop. So I simply cloned uh, the stuff and so on. You mean when I removed the object, right? So, so what was in the background? Yeah, so uh, for this, I simply took uh, uh, some, uh, I took like the first frame, I took the last frame, I combined them together, so I created some image that I can move around, and then I chucked it in <coughs> behind this uh, table. So it was, it was just it. I used just a single image. Single image that, uh, you know, simply is moving. Then uh, another question if the, with that pack shot. If yeah. they had asked you to put it down, yeah. could you have changed the lighting? No, okay. really. It's not, uh, that's why th this was the first moment uh, when I simply said no. It won't work. It simply won't work. How can I change the lighting? I cannot change the lighting. This is, I am dealing with the pixels. I am dealing just with an image, not with the object that... I have any control over, so that's why I simply said, uh, no, please let me use another shot. Okay, this might uh, sound like a redundant question, but yes. right when you hit that, uh, that spot when they ask you to lay it down, yeah. didn't it cross your mind to rebuild the entire scene in 3D and then... Yes, of course. Yes, of course, it did, but it would like take uh, take some time, and I would need to ask for more money, and they don't like it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, so so, so I just gave uh, another uh, option. So I said, okay, you have shot uh, this version and this version. Let us simply use this other version. If it's okay for you, I can deal with not charging you more. So they, yeah, so it was like this. But of, but of course, it came to, 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 to my mind, yeah, maybe it's uh, simply uh, easier and better to recreate everything in 3D, yeah. Also, if I can have uh, one really short one. Yeah. Uh, talking about production planning and setting up things up early yeah. in order to avoid uh, any impossible changes on uh, the long run, uh, wouldn't it be better to have a uh, multiple layer green screen shot with isolated elements in order to keep them out? Uh, sometimes it would be better, but sometimes uh, in my position I don't have the power to, you know, to do anything about it. I am given the shots. I am post-production, so, you know, this is what I deal with and I don't have anything, anything uh, else. If they didn't ask me to go on set, and like uh, assist them, well, then it's like uh, I can only say, okay, you give me this so you can get this, this, and this, but this one, mm, impossible. If I were there, mm, maybe, but. Uh, hi, I know you've been uh, talking more about compositing and handling the client, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, coming to the actual rendering or creating of the pack shot that yes. looks really beautiful and nice, and you're doing right. it in cycles, are yes. you not? Yes. yes. Uh, how do you like, uh, you know, because it's an expensive time-wise renderer, how do you manage that? How do you plan for that? I, I, I got three seconds, how long will it take so that it looks really nice, no noise, beautiful shots? <sighs> Yeah, How do you so actually... Sorry, so maybe I should uh, uh, tailor this presentation a little bit differently to uh, answer uh, such questions. Okay. Sorry that I didn't do no, this. No, okay, just... Uh, but, well, mm, I try to avoid things that are uh, 
uh, that like causes yeah. cause the noise. So, well, uh, as for the lighting, I don't use uh, mesh lights. I use the regular lights. Um, whenever I can, I use just a sun lamp, which okay. is pretty, you know, uh, pretty simple. And I use compositing. Uh, and then uh, the bounces when you when you have uh, the, the, the the bounces. For example, uh, cycles is 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 great uh, because you have the bounced light. But this is what causes the 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 most noise. Whenever you can replace indirect light by some kind of direct light, do it. Okay. So yeah, th this is. Yeah, just fake it. I mean, like, yeah, the, 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 those are just just yeah. just some, some some things that can come to my mind. The the things that I am thinking of when I am creating things. You know, so, you so just, yeah, you just rig the light to yes. avoid all the problems. Yes, yes, yes. I try to I try to do I try to do it this way because you know when okay when you want to render just a single image, it's mm, yes. it's not a problem. You can you can wait wait uh, an hour or two. No problem, but an hour or two times uh, yeah, 75, 75 or, or, or uh, I don't Plus know, 100 time. frames, mm, well, okay. Of course, well, uh, normally when you work uh, in a studio, you have more computers, you have the render farm or something like that, but anyway, it's a... Uh, uh, also, know. do you render out all the stuff in passes so that whenever somebody says, change yes. the color a little bit? Yes, uh, I render, uh, I try to, whenever I can, whenever I have the time, I try to render two passes. I render to multi-layer uh, EXR, uh, this is one thing, and uh, sometimes even I separate the lights. Okay. Because when you uh, illuminate the scene with one light source, then illuminate with the second light source, and then in compositing, when you add those images together, you get, Morgan. we are working in linear yeah. space. So when you add those images together, you get exactly the same result as you had if you uh, had those lights. And you have better control, because yes. you have two light sources, and you can, for example, tone down one of the lights, or, you know, I think this technique was explained by Bartek uh, probably two years ago at exactly that place. So you can just return to conference materials and see it. And it was okay, yeah, pretty yeah. fun. Uh, so to avoid complaints uh, by the client, it's uh, probably better to uh, have your pack shots made in 3D and then eventually uh, combine it with real footage uh, if there is one. Is that right? I didn't uh, exactly get the question. If so it's, it's uh, probably better to have your pack shots done in 3D, uh, the yeah. product images, and then eventually combine it uh, with uh, real footage, like some uh, background footage and stuff like this, like with in, uh, in this Verdin uh, advertisement, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, to have your uh, pack shots uh, uh, have your pack shots uh, in the real footage, and there's nothing you can do with them. Like uh, on it's the always it's always better to have uh, the clean plate that is uh, really a clean plate. Clean means clean without the pack, of course. Right. Yeah. It's, it's better. <laughs> but I don't know if I answered to your question. Maybe so. Uh, I got a maybe stupid question, but how do you get the tracking data from Blender to After Effects? I use uh, Blender to After Effects exporter, which is built in Blender, and uh, I wrote it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> this is uh, when you, uh, uh, it's like you, you simply select your objects, okay, and go to, uh, when you enable the add-on After Effects exporter, you go to File, Export, After Effects, and G J JSX file is being created. And then in After Effects, you simply run this JSX uh, script, and you have the null objects and so on. Of course, you, 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 you cannot uh, import uh, geometry or something like that, but you have the placeholders. You have the camera in After Effects, and you have the null objects that are placeholders for everything that you exported. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's, uh, 
uh, it's been in After Effects since version 2.61. That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Anybody else? Okay, so thank you a lot. Oh, no, there is one question. You raise your hand. Yeah, I think I just want to do it. Yeah, okay. Or, or Kate, or, or like that. Okay, then I'll do it like oh, wow. that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I noticed that the, on the videos that you're using, um, you were uh, uh, showing a, an, an, a little bit older After Effects version, I think. It's not CC, oh, yeah, right, yeah. is it? Yes, um, it's not CC, no, no. Because um, uh, you, you also just mentioned the, the horrible build and tracker for, from After Effects. Uh, yes, and, and this is my experience from this uh, particular version. And I know that in CC it works much better. I know, I know. Okay, the so. old tracker is still in there. But yeah. uh, there's also that new camera tracking module, yes, which, I know. which also works a lot better. So m maybe. But sometimes that it's, might it's be not. Uh, you know, uh, it's like uh, I tried it once or uh, twice. I don't know. Uh, what I like about camera tracking in After Effects is that it's a, a single button solution. So you simply click the button and you're done. But. Uh, what I like in Blender's uh, camera solving is that I have uh, more control. When you have a really easy shot, you wouldn't want to go out from After Effects. But if you have something more complicated, well, After Effects wouldn't handle this. It would be better to go to Blender and simply adjust everything. You know, it it takes time to adjust the things, to adjust the tracking points, to uh, and so on. But you have the control over it. Mm -hmm. So, simple stuff, After Effects. Complex stuff, Blender. Exactly. I've yeah. also got one more comment. In that in that pack shot that you showed us, you had an, uh, a slight sideways camera motion. Yes. And. Um, and in that case, you, you spent a lot of time and effort to remove things that were just uh, in the way and so on. And I probably, I'd, I'd normally uh, use that approach as well, but uh, I've just got a, a little suggestion. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe that sh shot could have worked as input for uh, photometric reconstruction. Because if you have a slight sideways moving uh, image like that, but you, you can actually convert... But you change of uh, camera angle, did, did you uh, notice? But that's that's not a problem for photometric, photometric reconstruction. You can just feed the the image sequence into like edges of Photoscan, okay. and it will uh, create um, a complete 3D textured reconstruction of everything. Mm. And uh, I've actually experimented quite a lot with that. Oh, and it might have worked for this case as well. Maybe. And so yeah. you might have gotten object separation and a, a full 3D scene where you could just have uh, removed any anything that might be uh, bothering you. So let's you. talk afterwards. Yeah. Right. That so was. I will really. That was love actually to, why I was, yeah. was saying I was <laughs> going to talk oh. to you afterwards. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> so what now? Thank you, Bartek. Thank you very well much.